Well, gentrification reached a turning point in the 1980s. Uh, I, think, I think it began in Jane Jacobs' time in the 1950s and early 1960s uh, in cities like New York and London and, and other big cities of the world, and then slowly attracted more and more people until gentrification reached a turning point in the 1980s, and then it was all over the media. And then there were actually neighborhoods that were marketed not as um, outposts of difference, but as places where middle-class families could safely reside and uh, find the, um, uh, the cheese and the dog uh, equipment and the baby strollers and all the things that uh, a, a fairly young middle-class family would want in the city, except for the, uh, the, st the, the sterile atmosphere that uh, was a uh, associated with the suburbs. So from the 1980s to the past couple of years, gentrification really reached a, a crescendo. And uh, one neighborhood after another in so many cities toppled from you know, what it had been as a working class neighborhood, often a neighborhood for people of color or a mixed neighborhood, but definitely a low income, low rent, low key kind of place. One after another, these areas became gentrified neighborhoods and hot residential markets. It isn't until the recession of the past couple of years that there's been a slowing, maybe not a slowing of gentrification, but a slowing of the new building that followed gentrification. Well, cities do go through cycles. I don't like to think of them as cycles because that predicts that there's going to be an end in, a, in an opposite direction from whatever we're living through now. But uh, uh, we, we should not forget that the decades before the height of gentrification were decades of urban impoverishment when middle class people moved out of cities, when businesses moved away from cities when the urban population became poorer, um, less white, more discriminated against. And uh, cities represented decline, not growth. So I'm not going to say that a period of growth is going to be followed by a cycle of, of something completely different, which will be followed by another period of growth at all. We don't know what the future will hold. But um, I think that the density of population in cities and the density of economic activities in cities have always been able to spark a regeneration of labor markets and then capital investment. And that's what you need to make a city uh, vibrant. And you know, that's, par that's part of the authenticity of cities too. One side of authenticity is old and original, but the other side is new and creative, and uh, it's, uh, it's important for cities to encourage and sustain the initiatives that new residents develop. I hope that those new initiatives would remain small, because I think it's the, it's the small businesses, the street vendors, the, the little restaurants, the, uh, the new services that people develop to serve people in their neighborhoods. I think it's those places that provide the best chance for a city to grow on its own without any artificial kind of, um, of program.